Yeah, I'm Mike Gladke from Red Hat. And a uh, little bit blah blah blah, just to show that I'm an old fart in the project, working on Redsales over 20 years now. And uh, my expertise is in Calc and RGN frameworks. And so I, instead of just copying the, from the release notes to the uh, presentation here, I show one specific example uh, of how I implemented a feature in Calc, which is about table structure differences, uh, which is a feature of Excel actually, where you can address the table range in very specific ways did not support and uh, 5.0 and 5.0 we at least can read these things but don't write them back actually and from 5.1 on we also write them back to the works in other format. So I'll just start with a short introduction into the formula compilation. So what's happening when you enter a ring text and uh, to produce actually the code that the interpreter can read. So, for a very simple example, we have the sum of a range from A2 to A4, which is three cells. And uh, we actually have two passes in the compiler. And the first pass is to scan the text into tokens. So, for each portion of text, identify uh, whether we know it and what it will result to. And for each token, we have an opcode uh, and a set or enum, which is actually the type of the token and for each token there are also different uh, token types defined so that to hold the actual information down. And each token is stored as a pointer and uh, part of a formula token array which actually holds the tokens there in the p-code variable. So we have this sum which is recognized as an opcode sum and holds the open and the push and close, the push here, OC push, always means for the interpreter here is some value or a range where I can obtain some value and the corresponding types we have there. So, SP byte in this case means for the sum function, uh, there would be stored the numbers of parameters the, the sum function expects there. And as you said, there's no additional information and the SP double ref is uh, stores the, the range, the actual coordinates, so from A2 to A4 on the current sheet, for example, and uh, the close is also just the separator. So we said two passes, so the next pass is to create a sequence, sequence of interpretable tokens, actually. Um, so, because the other form is just a tokenized uh, form of what we can read. So the interpreter cannot interpret that without uh, additional parsing. So we have again this formula and then we um, scan this token array again. We have this opcode sum and the opening actually um, descends with the parser into the next level and then the count as the push and the close again would go up at this stage. So in between, of course, instead of just the range, there could be another complex expression, um, which uh, the, the parser there has to handle, and there are all the precedences like multiplication goes for addition, whatever. And for this simple case, we simply ignore that. And we have, when we return from the level to the next higher level, we store that opcode into the resulting token array and the same with the sum there. So now we have the, the sequence of the push and the sum which the interpreter can actually interpret and it takes the push and obtains the parameter from there and hands it to the sum function for example. And this ends up in the arrays like this and we have uh, not complicated the uh, actual tokens there, but um, the, the, the pointers uh, uh, are just the same, which just the pointers are stored in the arrays and actually uh, point to the same objects there, which uh, is 
actually precondition for what we will follow next, how I implement these things, because when we adapt ranges by inserting rows, deleting rows, whatever, moving arrays around, um, we adapt the references, for example, in the RBN array, and automatically the uh, normal token array above is adapted as well, because the code is shared. So, we have a lot of challenges for the table structured references. For example, this is a table here which has uh, an optional header row and some data area and an optional totals row. And uh, it's a cell range that is defined to be a database range and calc you can be, uh, actually access on uh, defined database ranges. So, and the uh, table structure preferences uh, is the syntax to address uh, different parts of such a table. And the following examples always assume that this table lives in the cell range A1 to B5. This is the other challenge, that is actually the definition of the OXML format. So, that had to be implemented for these things. That's just for information here, you can read that later if you want to. Uh, it's an excerpt of uh, the syntax that Microsoft published in their XLSX formats. So these are examples how such table ranges can be addressed. So we have always the name table that can be an arbitrary name, that's just the defined database range you have. And uh, then within the square brackets there are prefix with a hash mark uh, items, so-called table reference items, which can be all, or data, or headers, or totals, or a combination thereof. And there's also the special item, this row. And this row always means on the row where the reference is written, it addresses the same row of the table. All these items, of course, can be translated and localized into various languages, so we also need tokens for those. We can't uh, just uh, handle it literally. And separated uh, by a comma in this case, depending of, on the localization, of course, um, everything that is a square bracket so does not start with the hash mark is a header name. So that can either be a, a cell content or there are even headerless. Um, headerless tables possible where the actual header names are stored within the special structure that is loaded from, from the OXML file. And on the last row you see, for example, that also header ranges are possible, which is in this case header 1 to header 2, that could be arbitrary uh, header names within the table. So for each of these uh, items, we need, of course, some tokens, which is uh, here the table name, which is already uh, implemented or was already implemented before as a database range. We have this OCBB area. And uh, the square bracket, the opening and closing, we need uh, different uh, um, opcodes, of course. And for all headers, data tokens in this row, we need the item opcodes, and we have the already separator and the range operator. And for the new resulting token reference, we need a new token of opcode table ref. So, we have, for example, this formula here, the sum of a table range, which is the data range of the column, uh, which is, has the header, header one. So when we parse that, I focus only on this table part here. The first table name is identified, identified as an existing database area and it has a type as the index where the index actually points into, into our known database area. So it's the area number so and so. And when then we talk past the uh, opening square bracket and as soon as we do that we know now the next what follows will be some table reference, some kind of table reference. So in the actual parsed or in the scan token array, the OCDB array is replaced with an OC table ref of 
the same index, of course, because it's same, still the same range, and exchange with a special SP table we have token that holds additional uh, information about the items and the resulting range and so on. And I short cut this with OCTRO for the table ref open and um, just to have a shorter line here. Then we encounter hash data, which is the data range of some uh, some table range there. And uh, we know this is a, a table reference item, and so store that item in the existing OCT table ref now. Um, we encounter another close, we will separate that, and more openness and a header name. And the header name, of course, is some offset within the table. And so we can either calculate that from the store uh, column names uh, of the existing tables or find them in the cells if it doesn't exist yet. And in this case, only the column is important. Uh, so we just remember some reference in, 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 in the column, uh, which here is always the, the first row of the defined database range. And some final closes there. Um, when parsing this thing, actually uh, we generate from all this, uh, from, from the entire expression above, so table, opener, opener, hash data, closer, uh, separator, whatever, uh, the result, the final result, is just one with errors. So this is the normal opcode push we have there with, with the information. This is a double reference with two coordinates, actually, and it is an A2 to A4, which then can be passed to the the interpreter. So at the end, we have again these two arrays there, but with the additional information that now for the OC table ref, this OC push we generated in the RPM is remembered at the as the table ref token. Um, I mentioned earlier that when inserting or removing columns, rows, and so on. The ranges are adapted. What we do now, if we adapt them in the RPN array, um, the the actual pointer that is that, that is shared between these two arrays means that also the the, 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 the the upper token array knows about these things later, which is very important because when we store this thing again uh, in the OMX and L file, we will store the notation of the table structure to parents. But in the ODF file, these are not defined, so we have to store the actual um, range, the resulting range. So the reference continues to work, but this table context is lost there. And um, yeah. That's it, actually. <laughs> Questions? Many. <laughs> The syntax part is the syntax part is finished. Uh, what is missing in, in storing in old and old is, are the surroundings, like the auto filter part I mentioned also earlier. And uh, we currently are able to store the the table context such that uh, Excel is able to read them, and we can read them as well. So the context is uh, a new round trip, and uh, the table references continue to work in both uh, applications. So there, there are some some details to do, to left left to do still. And I suppose the follow-up is: uh, Is there going to be in the future of the support in our own type format? Or yeah, I think we have to um, submit an extension or some something to to ways to get that into the open formula definition. Yeah, it's, to, it's excluding the uh, standardization part. Does it look like it would be particularly difficult to add support? For, for ODF? No, it's just, it's just uh, actually currently it works that if for one syntax the, the uh, table ref open is not defined, then we store the old ranges 
And if it is defined, we use the, the, the other form of the table search references. So it's just a matter of adding one line to one resource for that tree. Oh. Oh, thank you.